Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make organza ribbon cords. They're so pretty and they're kind of pricey too. I've seen them online for sale already done, but you know what? They're really easy to make and affordable too using supplies from our sponsor, Paper Mart. You can find them online at www.papermart.com, your best source for packaging and more. We're gonna use quarter inch wide organza ribbon. This comes on a 100 yard spool for a few dollars a roll. We're also going to use this rat tail cord. This is two millimeter in the color ivory. It's satin, it's beautiful, and you get 200 yards on one roll for about oh, eight or ten dollars, somewhere around there. Very, very affordable. We're also going to use a couple of these little cord ends. You can get those at the craft store. These are made by Blue Moon Beads. We're going to use a small barrel clasp and we're going to use two small jump rings. The first thing we need to do is to measure out some cord and I like to use the cord first and then I kind of use the cord to measure my ribbon. So I'm working on a bead board which is numbered with measurements. So I want this to be about 22 inches long. So I'm gonna start my cord and there's no waste here. So you wanna measure out exactly the length you want. I'm gonna start it at the 11 and kind of work my way around and uh, clip it at the 11 over here. You could also measure it out with a measuring tape. That is absolutely fine. Then I'm going to use my cord to measure out my organza and you're going to want to cut this flush or you're going to have to trim it later. It doesn't really matter. One or the other. I'll just do it to begin with. All right, then um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer so you can see how I put the cord ends on. What you want to do is put your ribbon down first and then center your cord end on there. And then grab your little cord end, okay? And you're gonna put the, uh, put the whole sandwich right in there. So it's kind of like that cord is forcing it in the little channel that you have between the little metal arms that we're gonna wrap around. And then using chain nose pliers, they work a little easier than trying to use our three in one tool. You're gonna fold over these ends just like so. Fold over one, get it squished down nice and good. All right, and then I like to turn it right around. Makes it a little bit easier. And then you're gonna fold down the other side and squish that in there really good. And then see how nice and neat that is? And if I give it a pull, it's not coming loose. And then um, just to make sure you don't tangle up your string, I kinda like to uh, hold it together and smooth it over and smooth it down and make sure I keep that cord centered up among my ribbon and we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Now you're gonna need two pairs of pliers. You can use um, one three-in-one tool and the other pliers you had but I like to use my three-in-one tools or my needle nose pliers the best. And we're going to open a jump ring. So a jump ring is just basically a little circle of wire and it's got an opening on one side and you want to grab it with your pliers so that the opening is on the top like so. And then you want to grab the other side of the ring with your other pair of pliers and gently twist it. Twist the pliers away from each other just like that and you're gonna make a little gap There we go. And then we're going to put the end of our ribbon on. And then we're going to put our clasp on. And I've got both sides of the barrel still attached. It's easier to handle that way, especially with a tiny clasp like this. And then to close our jump ring, we're just gonna grab both sides again and pull them together, twist them back together. Always open and close your jump rings with a twisting motion. You don't wanna do it with a, you don't wanna open it up like a U because you'll never get it closed tight again. So that's what that should look like. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing on this side. We're gonna open up our jump ring. Just make sure you got it with the, with the split to the top here. Using your both of your pliers. twist them apart, put the end of your ribbon on there, and then we're just gonna grab this whole mechanism over here, the other end of our cord, and plop that right on. And then grabbing the uh, jump ring again, we're gonna twist it shut. I do have jump ring openers, but I find that I can do a much better job with the pliers and they don't tend to come apart. So there you have that. Now let's zoom out and take a look at our finished necklace. 
Now the big reason I like to make these cords with the tiny little ends is because at craft fairs I like to sell my pendants as um, as just individual pendants but I find that finished jewelry sells better than just packaged pendants. You can get these little baggies at uh, Paper Mart by the way. I'll put a link below the video so you can check them out. But the cool thing about this is that, say, I want to sell the pendants, but I don't have time to make them all into jewelry, I could have these cords out by themselves in different lengths, and that way people can pick a pendant and pick a cord and make their very own custom jewelry. So, say somebody wants to buy this cute feather pendant, and I just put the price right in the back. Love these resealable bags. They're also food safe, too. And then you take the little pendant out, and you can slide that right on your cord and you're all set. See? And then they've got a necklace and they didn't have to worry about how they're going to finish it at home and it's a great way to boost your sales at a craft fair and the organza ribbons are very trendy right now so I do hope you try this out because it's so much fun to make. Again I want to thank our sponsor Paper Mart for giving us the supplies for these videos. You can check them out online at www.papermart.com where we make you look even better. Thanks so much for watching until next time happy crafting.